This is the Endocuff Vision, a revolutionary product designed to enhance colonoscopy by improving visualization of the colon, by giving greater control of the endoscope tip, and by improving polyp detection. During anal intubation and forward motion, the arms retract into the endocuff vision casing to create a smooth, low friction surface. As the scope is withdrawn, the arms flare out to gently grip the colonic wall. This gentle grip can also allow the physician to pull back and straighten loops. I've been using the endocuff on almost on a daily basis since 2012 on symptomatic patients and therapeutic procedures. In my clinical practice, I have found endocup vision benefits the patient in faster insertion and no increase in sedation. For the endoscopist, the device enhances the optical field of view, augments torque rotation, prevents excess loop formation, and delivers faster sweeping movements of the scope tip in a safe and controlled manner. Significantly, I'm also seeing an improved adenoma detection rate. Since 2012, I've had experience in using the endocuff in over 2,000 patients. When I used the original endocuff with the two layers of arms, I was sceptical about its benefit. Although there were clear advantages in anchoring the scope tip and improving visualisation, it quite frequently caused mucosal scratches, which were off-putting, and I didn't feel the arms were effective enough in holding the folds open. However, when the endocuff vision came along, there was a transformation. The views were significantly better, and there were no mucosal scratches, and the benefits by far outweighed any disadvantages. The original endocuff was the basis for an evolution to the endocuff vision. Development and pre-clinical evaluation improved intubation and stability, notably by the removal of the distal array of arms in favour of a single set of longer arms with more rounded tips. There are certainly some major advantages to using the device. During insertion, the tip of the scope can be anchored as the arms of the endocuff vision deploy to allow easier straightening of loops, facilitating a more rapid insertion, particularly in long or mobile colons. In fact, in the recent multi-centre randomised adenoma study of nearly 1,800 patients, the insertion times were on average a minute quicker in the endocuff vision arm of the study. But the main advantages of the endocuff vision are during withdrawal. As the arms deploy, they flatten the horstral folds, creating a relatively cylindrical tubular view. This allows an easier and more efficient withdrawal with less needs for backwards and forwards movements of the scope tip and enhanced ability to detect and remove polyps. In polyp enriched groups, such as those that are faecal occult blood test positive within the National Bowel Cancer Screening Programme, a 10% increase in ADR or adenoma detection rate is seen and this is a really clinically significant benefit. With a revised endocuff vision design, the arms were given more rotation and less flexion movement, which during insertion means the forward motion is augmented by the torque maneuver. This helps the scope to slide and climb over the fold swiftly, making the torque maneuver more efficient. The withdrawal technique is assisted by the primary flexion movement of the arms with lesser rotation movements around the hinge, exerting a deep gripping force to anchor on the folds. Here you will see that the design of the endocap vision helps to prevent excess loop formation and enables the endoscopist to straighten the scope, particularly in the sigmoid colon. It achieves a stable platform, more tip control and better visualization of the back folds, leading to a higher detection rate of precancerous polyps especially diminutive polyps. The flexion of the arms pushes out the mucosa safely, which can reveal flat, subtle lesions, such as here, where it could otherwise be easily missed.
Stability is important when there is luminal narrowing due to surgical adhesions. The sigmoid segment is slightly fixed, so I gently deflate the bowel wall and keep tip deflection and sweeping lateral movements to a minimum, making the visualization of the sigmoid segment more efficient. An important consideration is to know when not to use the endocuff vision. If you have a patient with known significant inflammatory bowel disease or any significant inflammatory condition, it should not be used. Also, if the patient is known to have severe diverticular disease or has had major pelvic surgery or radiotherapy with adhesions, it is best to avoid using it. This is because the endocuff vision slightly widens the tip of the scope and may cause more frictional resistance when attempting to pass around a tight or fixed bend. Of course, often during colonoscopy, the, the anatomy is unknown, but if you encounter a fixed or angulated sigmoid when using the endocuff vision, you should be prepared to pull back and take off the cuff. This occurs in about 4% of patients. If arms are apparent during insertion, this indicates that there is a colonic fixation where in severe cases the endocuff vision should be removed. In moderate cases, to deter a failed intubation of a slight angulated diverticular segment in the sigmoid colon, the endoscopist can select a pediatric scope with endocuff vision and consider applying the water immersion technique for extra lubrication. However, in all cases, a suspected inflammation of diverticulum is an absolute contraindication for the use of the endocap vision. The endoscopist should also be vigilant of malignant partial obstructing lesions. In such cases, it is advisable to remove the endocap vision and repeat the procedure as normal, so as not to increase the risk of trauma to the tumour nor implantation of cancer cells to other parts of the bowel. Endoscopists new to the endocuff vision always ask about retroflexion and terminal ileal intubation. In my experience, retroflexion is unaffected by the endocuff vision and you can retroflex easily in the rectum or the cecum. However, terminal ileal intubation is slightly more difficult as the arms of the endocuff vision can impede the scope tips deflection into the valve. One question that concerns new users of endocuff vision is will it fall off? Well the answer to this is it won't fall off provided it is placed correctly on the scope tip. To ensure correct placement I would advise the endoscopist to put the endocuff vision on themselves, making sure it is pushed right to the end of the scope so that when you look at the video monitor, it should not be visible on the screen. It is then on securely and it won't fall off. Another tip for effective use of the endocuff vision is to give antispasmodic at the start of the procedure to reduce horstral tone. This tends to allow for a smoother passage of the endocuff vision, particularly through the sigmoid colon. Antispasmodic may slightly lengthen the bowel but with the endocuff vision in place, the endoscopist can hook onto the bowel wall to shorten the colon and reduce looping at regular intervals throughout the insertion phase. Colonoscopic technology is constantly evolving to achieve safer and more accurate procedures. With endocuff vision, endoscopists can enhance polyp detection and protect their patients more effectively against colorectal cancer. Endocuff vision represents a further step forward in improving colonoscopy quality and efficiency.